What's up, Wise Flyers? David here. Today we're talking about how to qualify for a small business credit card. So if you're in the credit card and points game and don't yet have a business credit card, you should seriously consider getting a business credit card, even if you don't have a profitable business. Business credit cards offer some of the highest sign-up bonuses around, and if you're just going for the personal credit cards, you could double the amount of sign-up bonuses you could get and benefits by getting business credit cards. It opens up a whole new world world of points for you. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you could qualify for a business credit card, what to put on the business credit card application, and what are some of the best business credit cards to get. First, let's talk about what counts as a business to get a business credit card. So if you have any side hustle, if you're selling little things on Amazon, if you're buying things at garage sales and flipping it, Anything that you're doing to make a little bit of money, even if you're not making thousands of dollars a month, but just a few dollars here and there, that could still qualify as a business. Or if you're thinking about starting a business and not sure which is the best business to get into to start earning a bunch of miles and points, consider consulting. Because with consulting, there's no money up front, no need to buy inventory, there's no expenses at all pretty much. Pretty much with consulting, you're giving information and getting paid for it. So for the sake of keeping it simple, let's just say you have a consulting business now. You're, you've given advice to friends, family, whoever, and you're building your consulting business even if you haven't made a single dollar yet from giving this advice. Because not all businesses are making money right away. Sometimes you have to build clients, you have to build a reputation before you could start making money. Other businesses, you have to put money down before you even make a profit. So with consulting, let's just say you're starting your consulting business and you're going through these steps, I'll show you exactly what to do next. So now let's talk about business credit card revenue and income requirements. Requirements. So like I just mentioned, you don't always have to have a profitable business in order to get a business credit card because banks are offering business credit cards to grow your business. But remember, the number one thing I always talk about on this channel, you don't want to spend money you don't have in order to get miles and points because then if you get in debt, it'll completely cancel out cancel out any points you're getting. So make sure you only spend money that you have in the bank. Don't get it in debt. On a side note, when it comes to businesses, personally, I believe in the bootstrapping method. I always put my own money that I have to create businesses such as Wiseflies. I never uh, have raised money or capital or anything like that. Not to say that's bad, that's just my beliefs in creating a, a sustainable business. So when it comes to filling out business credit card applications or any applications in general for credit cards, it's really important that you tell the truth. Don't lie on the application because you could get in trouble there. It's better to tell the truth and get denied for a credit card rather than mess up the numbers and then go through a financial review with the bank. So be very careful with this part. So when you're filling out a business credit card application, it's based on your personal credit profile. So the bank looks at your total income and credit score as if you're applying for a personal credit card. So if you are living with people in your household and everyone is contributing to the bills of that house, whether utilities, rent, whatever, you could put the household income on the credit card application for personal income because those are the bills that are required to, or that's the income that's required to pay the bills of the house. It's also important to note that banks do not require you to have a personal card in order to approve you for a business credit card. And if you have a business that's making money, then when it Ask for your personal income, you can include your business income with your personal income. So if you're a startup or have a new business and haven't hurt, earned any income yet, then you could put that on the application. Making zero dollars could still get you approved for a business credit card. If you know for sure that you're going to earn a certain amount of money for the year, a certain amount of income, then you can estimate to the best of your knowledge. Just make sure that it is truthful. So before I get into whether it's better to have an EIN number or or be a sole proprietor let me just point out some of the best business credit cards so with chase bank i think the best business credit cards to get would be the chase ink cards so there are other chase business credit cards 
that are co-branded cars such as Southwest and United Airlines, but I think the Chase Business Inc. credit cards are the best ones. So we have the Chase Inc. Preferred, Chase Inc. Cash, and Chase Inc. Unlimited. If you're just getting started with Chase Business credit cards, I think the best one to get first is the Chase Inc. Preferred card because it's giving a an 80,000 point sign-up bonus. Plus you also get cell phone insurance if you pay your bill with the Chase Inc. Preferred card. The great thing about Chase Inc. cards is that you're able to get all three of them. For American Express business credit cards, you could get the business version of the gold card, the platinum card, but I think an underrated business credit card with American Express would be the Blue Business Plus credit card. So the reason why I think this is good is because it has no annual fee. You're earning two membership reward points per dollar on the first $50,000 in the calendar year. And along with Chase cards, American Express cards, and City cards, they don't show up on your credit report, which means that it won't count towards your 524, which means if you get business credit cards, then you can still get Chase credit cards because you'll be under 524. The credit cards that do show up on your credit report that do count towards your 524 count would be Capital One, Discover, and TD Bank. So if you are going for those business credit cards, be wary if you are trying to stay under 524. And for Citibank business credit cards, I think the best option here would be the City Advantage Platinum Select business credit card, which gives you American airline miles. So the sign-up bonuses with this card is pretty good. It could be anywhere from 60 to 70,000 American airline miles, depending on when you're watching this video. Personally, I've had this card a few times and I'm definitely gonna go for it again in the future. Some of the benefits of this card besides the uh, American Airlines sign-up bonus would be uh, getting free check bags on domestic flights, also preferred boarding on American airline flights. And if you want to apply for any of these business credit cards, you could click the link down in the description below and by using our links, you help support the channel to keep making great content for you. So when filling out a credit card application, do you need your EIN number or can you use your social security? I'll show you exactly what you do for a credit card application. So an EIN number is an employee identification number you could use that to apply for a business credit card, but it isn't necessary. If you're gonna uh, be considered as a sole proprietorship or sole prop, you could just use your personal social security number when it asks for the business uh, EIN number. But also keep in mind, let's say you're starting your consulting business, it's really easy and free to create an EIN number. It takes five minutes. I have a link down in the description below of an article explaining how to create an EIN number. So you just create an EIN number and then you could use that for your future business applications with your new business. Now, if you haven't made any money with your new business and you have this EIN number, if there's no money coming into the business through the EIN number where it's registered, then you don't have to worry about paying any taxes. If you're still in the beginning phases of your business, uh, you know you don't have to pay any taxes if no money is coming in. So there's no concern there with creating, creating an EIN number, but I think having an EIN number will definitely make you more credible as a business. Another way that could help you get approved and improve your approval odds would be to have uh, some type of relationship with the bank that you're applying for with a business credit card. So if you already have a checking account or maybe even a business account with the uh, bank, or even other credit cards with the bank. If there's some relationship established with the bank, you'll have a much higher chance of getting approved for that business credit card. Now, if you apply for the credit card and the application comes up pending or denied, you could call the reconsideration line and speak with a representative to put like a human behind your application rather than just some algorithm denying or pending your application. You could talk to somebody and share why you want a business credit card. So like I said before, it's important to be truthful and honest when talking with the representatives and they're gonna ask you questions about your business and you should be excited to talk about your business and they're gonna ask you why you want a business credit card. You could say you wanna help grow your business, keep your business expenses separate, say that you already have a relationship with the bank and you like their service so you would like a business credit card, you have some business travel coming up with that certain airline uh, credit card and so you would like to have that credit card, whatever the reasons are, 
uh, mention those, but you don't want to mention the sign a bonus whenever talking to a representative on the phone with the reconsideration line. And if you're curious about exactly what to say on the reconsideration line or what the numbers are to call, you could click the link down in the description below. I have a free PDF along with that PDF down in the description below. I have an article that goes more in depth of what to put on a credit card application. So you can click that both those links if you want and learn more about it. And if you want to learn more about the Chase Inc business credit cards and the strategy of how to get all of them and what you need to know, you could click this link over here or click this link down here. Click either one of those and I'll see you in the next video.